This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to Essentially Jacob, the Perfume Shrine. So, today we're going to be talking hmm, a delicate topic of oriental. Uh, it's a word that uh, in the perfume community is being... Banned is a big word, but it's a, you know, it's like you're not allowed to use it anymore. It's a slur. And then some people say, but you are allowed to use it because it's not a slur. And then some people say, well, to the community that belongs to the Oriental community of people say, well, we we perceive it as a slur. So what is it? What's it going to be? We're going to talk about it today. We're going to read an article about it. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, though. Uh, and, you know, help the little perfume channel grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can also follow me on Patreon, Super Deco, all spelled together. Thank you to all my patrons I've already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream every Saturday on my main channel, on my Super Deco channel. So you're, that's where I also uh, record uh, live the videos that you get to see on the Essentially Deco perfume channel. So welcome to all my co chators I live stream every Saturday. Everybody's welcome to join. Listen, you guys, this is an interesting topic. It's a delicate topic, obvi. Hey, C. Lala, how's it going? Uh, chewing words is hot, says Carrie Bradshaw. So listen, I, Glamour Magazine, none other than gla, Glamour Magazine, uh, .co .uk, uh, it reported um, February 2022, this offensive word is being banned from perfumes vocabulary. So why do some brands still insist on using it, says this article. And the article is from February of 2022. But truth be told, this whole Oriental debate, whether or not Oriental, Le Lion de Chanel, for example, being one of the latest released, really well-selling uh, Orientals. Uh, and it's like, well, mm, a lot of people say, no, this is a slur. You're not allowed to use that word. And... Uh, and again, as I said, it's a it's a conversation that's been going on for several years already. This is not news, but you know it becomes news when these like major magazines pick up on it, and usually these major magazines are like decades late on all of these things. But anyway, and in fact, we've had these conversations many a times on my channel, on both my channels, the Super Jacob channel and the Essentially Jacob channel, about the terminology and whether or not it is okay to use or not. Um, and so <clears throat> the article says, um, is anyone going to mention the giant tone deaf elephant in the room? I cannot believe they keep saying it. Have they been living under a rock? Private messages are pinging between a journal friend and I during a Zoom event for a new perfume. I'm fidgety, itchy, like there's a wasp in the room and I can't relax, says the reporter of this article. Oriental. This word is being repeated over and over during the, represent the presentation of the fragrance, and it's written three times in the press release in front of me. The founder of said luxury niche brand is chatting merrily away, but is clearly oblivious to the immense and crucial movement rumbling through the perfume industry. The word oriental is being abolished from the fragrance vocabulary. Despite it being a once essential classification term for rich, opulent, and amber style scents, since the early 20th century, the term was thrown into the spotlight last year by a handful of fragrance bloggers. No, not last year, my dear. Before that, even. But then again, Glamour magazine. A handful of fragrance bloggers who highlighted its inappropriate, racially uh, laden, and deeply offensive connotations. In short, it needed to go fast. Uh, I wonder how long Glamour magazine is going to take how many years it's going to take until it starts like also saying that gypsy is a word that shouldn't be used that byredo is using gypsy in their gypsy water connotation dior is using gypsy in their uh gypsy rose fragrance but i guess glamour magazine needs a couple of years to to get there as well uh in june 2021 bois de jasmine perfume blogger victoria frolova examined the terms historical associations with exploitation and colonialism she raised the question is it time to rename the oriental fragrance family it sent a shameful ripple through the perfume community me included says the author I once reported for Glamour that the perfume industry had taken huge strides to become more progressive, ecologically thoughtful, and socially inclusive. But racially sensitive? It hadn't even crossed my mind. I'm ashamed to admit I had been naively unaware of the offense and pain the term might have caused, and stopped using it immediately. 
Thankfully, many brands were unequivocally in agreement, but not all, whether stuck in the pressure of heritage compliance or in denial that it is actually a problem. Several brands and online shops ignored my emails when I asked them why the term was still in their copy. Their silence rung the loudest. Rot. Right. Um, and then the article goes on, but anyway, irrelevant. So point being, you guys, what are you saying? I mean, and this is amber is the alternative word for the imperialist word. Oriental says Jesus. Um, <clears throat> Claudia says, call me Claudette. Uh, Kate says, Edward Siad wrote a book, Orientalism, on this and other aspects of the topic many, many years ago. Julie Scott says, I'm sure I've heard uh, HGTV use that word in referring to some decor pieces. Ryan says, it's no surprise of Vlad has attacked Ukraine while we've all been distracted by Glamour magazine and this oriental debate, 3D chess. <laughs> yes, first world problems, obviously. Uh, we are very well aware of that, Ryan. <laughs> you are... Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, I thought Oriental was okay if not describing people. Uh, there was a rule, rugs, not people, that I always was told, says Katie. That's what I thought, Silala. Silala, I thought Oriental was okay. Well, this is why I think it's interesting to have this conversation, just because... Um, hey, Lex, Larie. Just because I think that... Unlike, you know, the conversation that we had a couple of, well, over a year ago now with uh, the gypsy water, uh, gypsy being the slur word for Romani. Um, gypsy is a term, is a slur that is connected to a population, a, a type of person. Um, like Oriental it can also be geographical. Now, I know what Jesus mentioned before and said, you know, we're talking colonialism given a connotation to that word. Like, let's say the colonialist Europe, in this case in particular, coined the terminology. But it is the Orient. And it is not just fixated to one particular population, uh, one particular ethnicity if you may so it's like oriental and occidental um it's like eastern western it's like saying northern southern southern <laughs> northern or southern so to me the way i personally perceived oriental not being a person of the orient myself which means maybe I don't have the right to even claim this, but emotionally speaking, or my thoughts on this are this. Whenever, personally, I hear the term, oh, oriental perfume, in my mind, what it always meant was, it's a fragrance that smells of a dreamy landscape, of a faraway land, from the Orient where certain spices, incenses, ambers are used or grown or harvested that, let's say, America or Europe don't have. Hence, certain smells are intricate and, and typical to that part of the world. So whenever I hear Oriental perfume, I immediately start dreaming away uh, these dreamy landscapes of fumes of of rich, deep, almost ambrosial, in some cases, oody, sandalwoody, deep fragrances. But truth be told, not all of these key ingredients for what was defined in Oriental fragrance actually came from the Orient. Like, for example, what makes this perfume, which is considered like the best released oriental fragrance of uh, the last two years, uh, Lilion de Chanel, what makes this one really cool is the labdanum, which doesn't need to be harvested from the orient. In fact, <clears throat> the rock rose or labdanum was kind of history-wise first, you know, 
introduced in perfumery, they say, from Cyprus. From the little goats that were eating on the on the rock rose. And uh, the rock rose, then when it gets hurt, because when you chew off a part of it, the secretion is like a waxy material that would collect on the beards of the goats. And then the goats would come home all chirpy, happy. They had their food. And then the owners of the goats would be like, damn, you goats always stink like ass. But now you don't? What's that thing on your beard that smells so not like goat? And then they connected the dots and they realized, oh, this labdanum has a very interesting waxy, deep, leathery, smoky smell. The rock rose slash labdanum, which is what makes Le Lion de Chanel so freaking amazing. It's the pure labdanum that they use. So yes, there's amber in here. Yes, you could also say, you know, because of that ambery connotation, the smoky connotation, we're going to the Orient. But in reality, um, you don't have to define this one in Oriental. Now, having said that about Lillian de Chanel and having cleared up the magical ingredient of Lillian de Chanel being kind of a European ingredient, I want to say, if we are to then take ourselves outside of our whiteness and, you know, occidental uh, existences and observe the slur that is oriental for many people, and it is a painful term for many people, then what alternative do we have to actually classify the perfumes that have been called oriental thus far? I'm not of the opinion that opulent is a good substitute for it. I'm personally also not of the opinion that amber, ambery, is a good term for it either. And this is where I, I do have a solution, but this is where I feel we're going to get in a kind of a, a legal debate because the first really... And again, for European history, really the first Oriental, the big one, is Shalimar. The first perfume that was released that kind of started it all. I know there have been some before, but Shalimar is the one that left that imprint. So, you know that just like Nutella has entered the international vocabularies. So Nutella, even though it's a branded name, has become a cultural thing. So Nutella is its own word. I think Shalimar should become its own word as well. Now, the gardens of Shalimar, again, belong to India. So this is, again, the Taj Mahal is involved. So is Shalimar even allowed to be used? Well, the perfume is called Shalimar. I don't think Guerlain is going to change its name. But I do believe that you could say, well, Historically speaking, I think it would be more appropriate to call the Oriental family the Shalimar family. What do you guys think? Jack says, we are evolved humans and can describe perfumes with more than one word. Yeah, but we're not talking about reviewing a perfume and describing how it smells in one word. We're talking about perfume families. So a family needs a word. Um... So, okay, so I think that we're having a little distinction here between when we are reviewing a perfume uh, and we're talking about how it smells to us, what feelings it gives us, what visions it makes us feel. And I mean, technically, to dis to describe a perfume and to review a perfume, you don't need to at all give it a family. Uh, <clears throat> you don't have to. I mean, human beings have this tendency of putting everything into boxes. We love labeling things. It, it makes our life simpler. We just think that if we label stuff, it's easier to cope with, it's easier to deal with. So we have this stupid tendency to always label things. Okay, so let's say you don't want to label a perfume at all. Let's just say we don't want to put any family <clears throat> connotations to any perfumes at all anymore. So we're not going to call perfumes Shepra from the Shepra family. We're not going to call them from the Oriental family. We're not going to call them from the floral family. We're not going to call them floral aldehydic family anymore. Let's just, okay, fine. Let's just forget about the families and, and just go into the description of the, of, the, of the fragrance itself. We can do that. We can definitely do that. 
but then this whole attitude that we have of labeling things and when we're writing articles, newspaper articles, everything has to be succinct, short, and to the point. So, and that's why I get, you know, criticisms on my channel from people saying, why do you need 40 minutes to review a freaking perfume? I'm like, well, because when I review a perfume, I don't just tell you, this is the family, this is the longevity, this is the projection. Done. We're done. No, that's not how it goes for me. I need the 40 minutes to go on a journey. <laughs> that magical word. And I, I go through different phases, stages, uh, the top notes, heart notes, bottom notes of a fragrance, what it makes me feel, where it takes me to, the visuals it gives me while I'm inhaling it, smelling it. But there's a lot to consider when you are reviewing a perfume. So, but again, on a lot of these websites and articles and people writing books about perfumes, you know, they need to kind of make it succinct, category, category, category. That's, you know, you got to categorize a perfume and then you could review it. Now, if we're going to do a category, an alternative category to Oriental, I thought to myself, Shalimar category would be kind of cool. What do you guys think? Yeah, Asia, that's how it's spelled, Shalimar, correctly spelled. I feel scents are described to help the consumer to pick a mood. Lex Larry says, that's a good point. Honestly, personally, I'm not comfortable saying Oriental, so I always just say of the East, and it gets my point across in a more sensitive manner. Jack says, I said that in my earlier chat, the categorization is restrictive to creativity. But, but, but human beings, that's what human beings do. They categorize everything. I mean, even the way that you're graded when you go to school, that they're putting you in they're already educating you from when you're little to be in a category so it's really hard to break out of that uh construct later on in life and <clears throat> now after decades of this of, of kind of the family categorization of perfumes being the way that they are telling people you gotta stop using that uh, well then the bigger debate should be had here should we completely abolish the families all together um or are are we still good with the categorization uh but just we got to change the name of, of of some of the families i personally don't know what is better i think personally well what i personally think is that as human beings we should try to break out of those patterns that we were given also as kids into like always being put into boxes and categories because they limit us every box is a limit and why should we but we have a tendency of, of limiting ourselves that's what human beings do so it would be great to break out of the box and not have that need to uh, give a category to a family of a perfume but what are you going to do that's the way it ticks every time you open a website and your website dedicated to perfumes they are structured that way it's about category every time you read a book on somebody who wrote a book about perfumes you go through it it's structured in categories like it's really hard to break out of that pattern so what are the alternatives we have perfume with personality can't be just floral or oriental etc it's a whole journey with beginning main theme and end Lex says if we tell them to stop using them uh, we should come up with an alternative as a non-white person I'm not offended by the word orient says Nora um, just change the name of some we have to keep <laughs> sheep says Aisha well there you go you see but the, but the but the rule can't apply to something but not everything and again we're, again we're like this is why gen y and gen z are seeking more genderless options says lex jack says are there other family categories that are geographical For perfumes, I'm thinking, no, not that I know of. I just say incense vibe, but so true, break out of the box. I mean, but incense, again, yeah. Because incense is an ingredient of a perfume. It, it can be a note in a perfume, um, but it doesn't define a family. <clears throat> because not every incense perfume is, not every incense perfume falls in the category of, of, of Shepra or Oriental or this or that. Again, what what is our solution? What is the alternative to Oriental? Shepra is geographical. It's Cyprus in French, LOL. Actually, no, Jesus. It's a bit more complicated because... Um, um, uh, okay, so look, let me Google it. Because with Shepra, we have also the not just the connotation it's not just geographical 
It's not. And I've been reading into this Shepra situation. Um, many times. So we have Koti um, doing Shepra and the French, uh, like uh, Jesus said, uh, the term Shepra is French for the island of Cyprus. Um, its connection to the perfumery originated with the first composition. To, this is, by the way, Wikipedia. So take it with a grain of salt. The first composition to feature the bergamot labdanum oak moss accord. Francois Koti's perfume Shepra from 1917 now preserved at the Osmotic, uh, whose name was inspired by the fact that its raw materials came predominantly from Mediterranean countries, not just Cyprus. So, if anything, Shepra should be called Mediterranean, not Shepra. So, if we're going to talk about Mediterranean countries, plural, predominantly Mediterranean countries, ingredients from... Then you could say that Shepra should be renamed the Mediterranean family of, of fragrances. But then we also know that from the Mediterranean family of fragrances, you also have the florals that are not necessarily mixed and blended in with oak moss or labdanum for that matter, and don't have the bergamot in the opening notes. Um, although perfumes in a similar style had already been created in the 19th century such as Eau de Chypre by Guerlain and Chypre Cologne and Chypre Powder had been known centuries prior to those. Feminine Chypre by Coty was so influential that it inspired many descendants, becoming the progenitor of a whole family of related... Uh, Robert, thanks for renewing the membership, I think, because it's... Yeah, there you go. 16 months! Yes, Queen! Thank you so much. Chypre perfumes are the best, says Robert. Uh, sharing the same basic accord, which came to be known as Chypre. So... As you can see, it's not that simple. Since most perfumes that we know of in the modern world and on the modern day market stem from Europe, but are not limited to because Europe is not, you know, perfumes existed also outside of Europe. Uh, but France kind of owns that, the right, you know, they claim that right of being the highest perfumeries, you know, even though we, again, we know that in the, you know, in the Middle East, you have a whole other tradition of perfumes and the attars and there's like a whole, you know, going for generations and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years back in history. Okay, but still France has has kind of claimed this snobby, like, they, like the French do with everything. They own the perfumery world, right? And the best perfumes are in France. I mean, debatable, but that's what they claim. That's what they say without saying it. You know how the French can do. Uh, and so... When they define the Shepra genre and connect it to Cyprus, in theoretically, in practicality, we cannot name it, name these fragrances Shepras because, as it states here in the definition, it's about several Mediterranean countries because certain ingredients are found in some Mediterranean countries and not others. So technically, we can't even call a Shepra Shepra. So you see again another family that crumbles, you know, for other reasons, not for morally object reasons, because, you know, Oriental is a word that we're not supposed to use anymore. So, uh, but back to the Oriental, what is the terminology we can use if, if people who want to deal with perfumes and want to maintain the families intact, if you want to disrupt the families, then just disrupt the families. But if you want to maintain the families, what alternative do you give it? Oh, Robert, you can send a member. Yes, but you can send it once a month. You get one of these once a month. Yes, 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 yes. So it's not technically a renewal. I got it. Uh, that's part of your member perks, Robert, a renewal super chat. Yeah. Uh, France has been influenced a lot by North Africa also, says Nora. Okay, but what do, guys, do we have an answer to this? What alternative do we give it? Now, the lady journalist here was saying, let's call it opulent. I'm like, well, that's not enough to, to define... A type of perfume like Shalimar or Le Lion de Chanel. 
Thank you, Nicole. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Loving your look. Thank you so much. Yes. I, um, we can't just use the word spice either if we are sticking to regions because there are spices everywhere. What about emotional categories? Oof. Emotional categories, I mean, then we're going to open up a whole other can of worms. How about exotic or something like that? Well, exotic is tech actually, um, many people deem exotic to also be a slur. Oh, well, there you have it. So what are you going to do? <laughs> if it's regional, says Silala, then why not Far Eastern? Dressed for the fashion trenches, says Seabreeze. Always, darling. Always. Um... No, opulent is just a wealthy sounding word, says Catty. Yeah, I also feel it's opulent is, is misses the mark completely. O opulent really misses the mark. Ayla, thank you for becoming a tier two member, sweetie. Thank you. This is a difficult one. Opulent is used in marketing to describe lots of perfumes. Lenio reminds me of my Byzantine. Oh, that influences Venezuela. Okay, look, this, this. This can this I think we can work with because the Byzance doesn't exist anymore. The Byzantine Empire is gone. Could we technically as a kind of like a, a dreamy word to define this type, this family? Could we call them the Byzantine family? Like Byzantian, Byzantian? It's a Byzantian perfume. I I could be down with that. I could be down with that. I could be I I could be like, oh, it's a Byzance perfume. I could be down with that. What do you think, guys? I know because like, obviously Byzance doesn't exist anymore, and it's it's like in the past, and it. So technically, like, how how can something be made today of something that doesn't exist anymore? But. The inspiration um, is interesting. I Byzantinian or Byzantian uh, accord. What do you guys think? Because it does deliver a very clear visual. Because we have art, Byzance art, Byzance drawings, materials. You know, they use a lot of gold. They use a lot of that heavy uh, weight jewelry, which a lot of these perfumes have that heft and that weight as well. And they are very golden in the way that they smell. And they have that kind of dreamy, smoky. Um... <laughs> really? You want to do Beyonce without the A? So you want to, you want to call them Beyonce, not Byzance? <laughs> To me, Oriental inspires a feeling. We need a word to inspire the same feeling. Not sure if I'm making sense. I know what you mean, Mrs. Blue. So what would it be? In my opinion, amber is very fitting, says Jesus. Then you have your sub-styles. Amber spicy, amber floral, amber incense, etc. I don't know why I don't feel the amber. I, I know a lot of people have, have actually said, you know, amber call it a family i mean usually say the amber accord so mm. uh, yeah amber sounds reductive <laughs> it's 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 kind of reductive because because this you know these perfumes aren't just that accord and are not just that ingredient they're not just that you know, amber is not the only thing in here. And that's why I think it's reductive. Because there's way more ingredients in here that make this one special. More important ingredients than amber. That make it even more... This is just I, I could be lifting Shalimar as well as an example. But you know what I mean? That's why I think to give a, an ingredient or a note a whole family is a bit much. I think it's reductive. I, I think it's reductive. Oasis is a good word, says Katie. Mrs. Blue says, I like Byzantine. I also like the Byzantine Accord. Like, oh, this is this is a Byzantine Accord. Because Byzantine sets a mood and a tone without going into specific ingredients or without going into specific... Um, 
simple notes of a perfume because amber would be one of them not just all of them and so i don't know personally i could go with byzantine family um Asia says, oh my God, now I want to go to Venice, the opulent decadence. Yeah, I love Venice too. I feel like most people don't know what the Byzantine was. But, but they can go, like, look it up. <laughs> my God, serving Madonna everywhere we go. Um, I like that. Maybe if they got more specific, like Moroccan Amber, Chinese X, Japanese X. But you know somebody's going to have an issue with that as well, Kat. For sure, somebody's going to... Hey, Suzy Q, how's it going, my love? Chizza says, well then, let's name it the European colonialism perfume family. Cha. Rococo would also be a good way to describe a family of perfume too. 31, 31 Rue Cambon category. Uh, yeah, Rococo or Rococo, like some people call it. Um, yeah, there's a certain decadence to it. That, that's interesting. Or Baroque. I mean, a Le Lion de Chanel is a very Baroque perfume. And Baroque is also inspired by the Byzantine. <clears throat> Tyler says, if they don't know Byzantine, uh, then uh, they were sleeping during world history class. And that's on them. When in doubt, we turn to Latin, darling, says Jack. How about Dewey Decimal kind of system to categorize? Wow, Ollie, that is fascinating. Um, D Dewey Decimal system. So what number would uh, the X Orientals be? what decimal system would we give them? Coco is a Baroque perfume too. Yes, Coco is very Baroque. Very, very Baroque. Love your look fabulous, says Wendy Ramirez. Thank you so much. Thank you. Acta non verba, says Jack. Like a library, says Katie. Hmm. I'm Moroccan and lots of products are called Moroccan, says Nora. Uh, Silala says, I had the Baroque versus Rococo convo with teenagers this week. Interesting. It is very fascinating, Silala, also because, I mean, they are different uh art from an art historian point of view different aesthetics they have certain similarities but they are also different times coco is so baroque and i love it very harry potter says cat e well anyway i think we're not going to come to a conclusion and during this live stream but it is definitely an interesting topic to talk about i mean let us, you know, converse about in the comment sections down below. What alternatives do you guys suggest and recommend? Not that, you know, it's a bad thing to to to, to change a name. It's a, it's a good thing. Why? I mean, hey, if a word hurts people, don't use it. It's as simple as that. I'm totally fine with that. But then what alternative do we give it? And what worthy, worthy, hefty alternative do we give it? Because these perfumes really deserve a beautiful word for their family because they are really special and they they make you dream so you know they deserve a really good name just saying so it, it's definitely worth having a conversation uh you know i feel that leon stands very close to number five although it's a new perfume says fotini i mean it also has similarities with shalimar but it's also very distant from shalimar and has coromandel notes number 22 there's a lot of things in here I apologize for being late to the party, but hi, Deco, you look fabulous. Thank you so much, Margot Robinson. We could discuss this until the cows come home. How do you pin down a beautiful perfume with words? Uh, difficult. That's why I always take my 40 minutes time to review a fragrance. And on, honestly, um, I think the Byzantine family or the Baroque family is a worthy name for such beautiful fragrances that have so much depth and heft and weight to them. Uh, <clears throat> Gustavo says, just call it perfume. As you say, it's for men, women, aliens, or rocks. It's for everyone. Let it be one thing. Um, okay, but we, again, we have to differentiate here, Gustavo, the, the, differenti the differences between perfume being for everyone Yes, agree. And also perfume knows no gender, in my humble opinion. But then you need words to, to describe a smell. You can't just say they all smell the same. You can't just say, oh, all perfumes are the same. They're not all the same. And they inspire you different moods and different dreams and different visions. So it would be a little bit reductive to just say perfume. 
we need more. We definitely need more. And quite frankly, we have lost our capacity of describing perfumes. And this is also one of the reasons why I keep pressing and stressing on this point of it's fine. It's fine to use 40 plus minutes to review a perfume because I, I cannot believe that we have been reduced to, to simple, you know, people have lost the vocabulary um, to describe perfumes, how they smell on them. What does the average person do when they buy, if they even buy a perfume? You ask them, how does it smell? They're going to be like fresh, sweet. It kind of ends there. <laughs> like that's kind of how limited uh, people are in their way of perceiving and talking about perfume. Like we're talking about perf people that are that are not, you know, crazy in love with fragrances like we are. And, you know, people that have one perfume at a time, if at all. And that's it. Uh, I have, per I'm, I have, per I'm, right now, everywhere I look here, I, there's perfumes everywhere around me. So I live surrounded by perfumes. So obviously my vocabulary when I describe a perfume and a smell is much more enhanced because I've been spending a lot of time dealing with it. And that's why I think it's kind of, it would be sad to reduce our vocabulary when we talk about perfumes to just say, well, it's a perfume, it, you know, you know, it's, it smells fresh, citrusy, sweet. Floral, done. Like, of course, there's much more to it. So I think giving certain perfumes also like a historic context and a historic artistic movement, attributing that to certain perfumes can add more depth and vision to the perfume. So if you, you know, add the Baroque or the Rococo or Rococo, like some people say, or if you add the um, Byzantine adjective to a fragrance, you give it a lot more depth and you automatically you automatically instigate a conversation that goes deeper because smell a smell itself it does go deeper and it it definitely deserves more definition than just saying oh this smells fresh this smells sweet this smells like a flower we're offline again all right all right you guys so um Gustavo says, yes, uh, what I meant by let it just be one thing is that each person has their personal meaning for a fragrance so that in general it is one thing. But in the personal, let it be everything. Thank you guys so much. Wonderful way to end the video. Until next time, well, leave, your, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below if you have an alternative to uh, that word that, we're don't, that we uh, don't want to use anymore. Uh, and what that alternative would be. Comment section down below. Thumb up this video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.